Good morning. This is Chris Allison, and this is the Genesis Ag Podcast. I'm here this morning with Mark Rothermick, product specialist from the Kansas City area, and Ken Berge, a product specialist from the Pennsylvania area. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing well and glad to have you with us today. We're going to talk this morning a little bit about Revita Inn and some of the things it's doing on farms around the country to help farmers mitigate some of their nitrogen usage. We're definitely seeing people being able to cut their inputs and uh, see healthier crops, uh, healthier soil, and uh, a better biological profile. And so maybe you can start us off a little bit talking about what you're seeing uh, with Revita in on some of your customers' farms. Chris, it is exciting. As I've been working with some of my customers two or three years now with Revita in as a part of their program, some of the changes that have been happening in plant health, as you mentioned, and also soil structure, and some of the yield increases the guys have been seeing, as well as their ability to reduce some of their other synthetic inputs, especially nitrogen, and depending on which products we're working with, also phosphorus substantially. It's just a full range of advantages that we're seeing happen with our biological programs. Great. Ken, what kind of results are you seeing uh, with your customers? Chris, I've been with Genesis Ag going on five years, and I have some farmers that have been using this biological program on their farms, on their whole farms, and the structure of their soil being changed. And in use in some of those products are like Farbos, the Vita N Terra, and the, the big one to help with the soil structure, the Revita N. But then we also feed into that with EnviroBoost which is making a difference in these farmers with their crops, both crop farming and also with dairy farming and seeing their quality of uh, forage for, for their animals improving. And I'm seeing these guys maintain yields like they haven't before across their whole farm and being able to take advantage of what they already have in the soil there by using the biological program and utilizing the nutrients that are in the soil by using about a half a pound of nitrogen and still producing on the crop side about 230 bushel average across the farm and also being able to push out 25 to 30 tons of corn silage with less than a half a a unit of nitrogen per bushel. So those are some of the things that I'm seeing on the farmers that I'm working with several in several different states. Can you expand a little bit about what you're seeing reductions-wise on the farm? So I'll share a little bit real quick on a few of the guys that I've been working with, Chris. I've got several producers who are within a, the first year or two moving down to that seven-tenths of a pound of applied nitrogen per bushel of corn, doing that consistently and across the yield spectrum. My area is pretty diverse between the four states that I cover. So yield potential can vary quite a bit within that. And it doesn't matter if guys are producing 300 plus bushel corn or if in that 150 to 200 bushel range, they're able to do a lot more with less. And I've had a few guys do some different testing, small strip testing, even adjusting rates with their Y drops. I've had guys show instances where dropping 50 pounds off one of their Y drop applications gained them seven bushel. That that was an astounding thing for guys to think about that potentially, but it's pretty eye-opening as well. So Ken, I know in talking with you throughout the year, there are a lot of exciting things happening for some of your producers with the programs that you've been helping them with. What might be one or two of the primary things that you've been seeing? Mark, there's so many variables out there. It's not a cut and dry thing. The one farmer that I have is a dairy farmer and he puts his nitrogen down when he plants and he doesn't even come back in and do any side dressing of nitrogen, still maintaining better yields than his neighbors. And I know the other year when it was so dry, I realized that it affected all the farmers and the drought that we had. And the farmer had to buy some extra corn silage because he didn't have enough for his large operation that he's working on. 
And the corn silage that he bought, he said, averaged four ton less to the acre than his did. So that really told me that the soil structure was able to hold the moisture. And he just puts his nitrogen up front. And then I do a, a stalk nitrogen stalk count at the end of the season. And he still got more than enough nitrogen there. So it's showing me that the biology and the organic matter and everything in the soil on how we're changing this is able to hold nutrients in the soil. And Ken, that's really exciting. Some of the results I've heard coming from your testing with that producer. I know we talked a lot here about nitrogen thus far. And you hit on the changes of the soil structure and the water holding capacity, being able to produce more grain. And I know I've seen that in several of my producers when we hit those drought conditions that our plant health maintains longer. We see the stay green. It doesn't start firing near as quickly and I'm sure you've seen some of those same types of things. Exactly. I've seen that that year that it was so dry. We dug the soil up and to see how dry it was, but yet the structure of the soil was there and the plants were really pretty green for as dry as it was. There's no two ways about it. But Mark, you were saying on the other nutrients in the soil, and that's what I'm seeing too with the, the biologicals that we're using on how it's increasing the micronutrients in the soil because they're making them available for the plants. So we're actually seeing on soil tests that the levels of the other uh, micronutrients that are coming up because of the biology in the soil making them available. So that's huge to help on farmers reducing that side of their inputs also. I'd like to dig into that just a little bit more with you, Ken, because I know you've been doing with some of your guys pretty consistent testing for nutrient levels. Obviously, our goal is to help guys become more profitable through the process of being able to reduce some nutrient inputs, but increasing the efficiency of the recovery of those because of the biological activity. But some of the testing I've been hearing coming from you guys is pretty astounding in the fact that even though they're reducing the inputs they're applying, I think you've been seeing results of actual nutrient availability increasing in those fields. Is that correct? That is exactly right. I'll just go down the list here and just a couple of the things that might have went up a little bit like phosphorus level was at 111, now it's at 152, and we have potash here at 121, and now it's 165, and this guy's not adding any additional fertilizer whatsoever, none, no fertilizer whatsoever, and he was on the same program that it was prior to me coming in there and working with him with Genesis Ag. The magnesium went from 166 to 243. So this is the kind of stuff that we're seeing, the zinc level, the manganese. And I know sulfur is another one they say is so difficult to have in the soil. And he went from nine to 25 parts per million. So we're seeing a lot of levels increase in the biology in the soil. Boron was 0.5. Now it's 1.6. So those are the type of things wow. we're seeing. Yeah, those are astounding when you think about the fact that so many people have worked for years applying fertility, trying to increase the levels in their soils of available nutrients. And I think we've kind of misunderstood how important the biological component of this is within the soil of making those things available, the, the biological capabilities versus just the strict chemical uh, associations. I think farmers just have to grab some acres and try some acres and see and stick with it uh, and see what they see from year to year as they continue to stay with the program. I agree. We often see results of things changing the first year. And maybe we should talk just a little bit about that even, Ken, the fact that our goal in year one with a lot of producers would be, we'd like to see them start backing off, especially some of their nitrogen and maybe phosphorus, depending on what all products they're using. 
and we start to see some of the benefits even of that with the plant health and changes in the soils. What have you seen oftentimes in first year application? What, what kind of results are you, you guys seeing? I would say on the, on the first years of starting with it, if you really look at your soils and pay attention to them, you'll see the aggregates in the soil structure starting to loosen up. And I know that you have done studies on that, on water penetration into the soil. So even like overnight, when the plants are so heavy with dew and allowing that to penetrate in the soil, because I've many a time that I've been out there in the field and right around the stalk, you will see the ground all wet. And that's because of the dew that came off of that plant. And then to be able to go in the soil, and, and then the soil hold that moisture. I think that's what really sustains our plants. Yeah, you're right. You mentioned some of the things that I have been doing. I've worked a lot the last couple of years with doing slake tests and water infiltration tests. And it's really amazing the changes that happen, oftentimes even the first year. But in subsequent years, people that might have been on it a second or a third year, how much faster our treated soils will take water in and transfer it into the soil profile, which is a huge component of we get some of these heavy rains or fast rains that we get as much of that into the soil as possible for our plants without it running off. So that's a big component. And then as we moved beyond just the visual part, when you start putting your fingers into that soil after it's had time to soak in the water. I equate it to back when you were a kid and you jumped in a mud puddle, how squishy and soft and mushy the, the soil was in the bottom of a mud puddle. But when we start looking at the soils that have been treated, oftentimes that aggregate that you talked about is very stable. And it's, it's solid. And that's the important part of the soil structure changes that we're trying to see. Exactly. I would just encourage farmers to give it a try, pay attention to what we're doing. And I feel that the road that Genesis Ag can take them down will help increase their profits and cut their inputs. I agree. Absolutely. It is important to do some testing and some trials and to watch for these small changes throughout the season and look for all of the little things that are changing in your operation. I know there are a lot of biological products on the market today. I just wondered what you both felt may provide an end a special product in the marketplace. Well, I guess some of the things, Chris, that I see that are advantages with the Genesis Ag products really across the board are some of the handling capabilities with it. The fact that we're very diverse in the way they can be applied, whether they be broadcast or in furrow or two by two banded. So we've got flexibility there. We've got stability with our products, being able to tank mix them with fertility in many cases, and also even herbicide applications, we can be combined with that without impacting the efficacy of our biology or even the stability once you put it in the tank. If you don't finish up that day, our product's going to be good in the tank for an extended period of time that you don't have to worry about losing that efficacy. So those are some of the strong points for me. Ken, how about you? What kind of things, what other things are you seeing to being benefits? What you were saying there, Mark, is, is being able to mix this stuff up. There's no choice about it. And then on top of it, the quality that Genesis Ag puts out. And Genesis Ag is really particular on the quality of the raw materials that they get. And this is the reason why we're getting the response that we are on, on our farmers' fields. So I think another important point, Ken, is something that you even mentioned in passing, but the fact that you've been working with these products with the biological portion 
for five years already. And we know that Philip and Josh, their experience with these products goes back several years beyond that. We've been working and figuring out our products for several years. And how do you think that plays into what we're able to bring to the market? Years of experience is always huge when we when you go to the marketplace, that's for sure. And I think the farmers are seeing that when they work with these products and find out because I've talked to a lot of guys that tried different humic and fulvic acids and having major issues with mixing with it that they get so frustrated with it. And that's one thing with our stuff. They just, like you said earlier, Mark, they just tank mix so nice and then stay in suspense too and don't settle out. You can. When I approach a customer, a new customer about how to work with our products, my goal is to start out at least the first year trying to be budget neutral by replacing some of the nutrients he may be using, implementing our biological program and looking at that as a budget neutral approach. And with a goal then of maintaining or increasing yield as a part of that process. How does that fit with what you're doing and how do you try to work that in even with subsequent years? What, what's that look like for you? When somebody wants to try a product, they're adding more money to their expense. And I said, let's find an area where we can reduce some inputs to be able to uh, maintain your same budget on the farm there. And this year is just off the charts with all inputs for the farmers. There's no ways about it. And every time I get a guy to try another biological product or something else that it might help with plant health or some other areas we might be looking at, I always tell them, where else can we cut? And we have not decreased yields because of doing that. And I'm just looking at a gradual program for guys to be able to switch over to biologicals by reducing other inputs because like I shared with you on those micronutrient levels going up before I was adding these micronutrients to the soil. And I can show you from years in the past, they haven't moved. One year they were up, next year they were down. So we always kept applying them. And now we virtually cut out all them micronutrients because the levels are going up in the soil because the biology making them available. So why mm -hmm. put them in there? Well, that's all the time we have for today. I would really like to thank Ken and Mark for joining us today and uh, giving us some of their experience using Revita N and the Genesis Ag Biological Program with their customers. Hope you can join us uh, very soon for another edition of the Genesis Ag Podcast and have a great day.